subway stations, public markets, as lethally, though sometimes with less agony, and as legally as done by Pilate and his minions. When what we need is resurrection, we need new life, a rising, a raising, a walking dead, to live not as the world makes it happen, but full, vibrant, vital human beings, standing, striding forth, Lazarus light from their tombs, theirs and ours, to claim divine birthright belonging to all. God is ready to empty our tombs. Amen. And thank you very much for that. For that word. I often pray for the wonder about the lives that matter. We heard James speak to that in his prayer today. Those who resist the hanging trees of oppression and the hanging trees of silencing. Those hanging trees of racism, sexism, transphobia, I'm thinking of North Carolina, homophobia, ageism. Those hanging trees of religious intolerance or fear of another. The voices of injustice and hate rise daily in the world for many. Even in this congregation, some have that targeted bullseye right on their back. And we see these very thoughts played out in Scripture today. The fledgling movement and community of faith led by Peter and the apostles accused the religious leaders of hanging Jesus on a tree. Yet, the good news is, he was raised from the dead, and the tomb is empty. Those leaders were incensed with jealousy and classism. Who is this ordinary, fish-smelling, hands-dirty, fisherman turned preacher turned movement leader think he is to talk to us, the council leaders, in this way? <laughs> and by what authority does he speak to us in the right council like this? Can you hear it? <laughs> you all might have had somebody talking to you. Like, oh, I'm not <laughs> now, lest we sit in judgment of the council, I think there are times when even today we find ourselves in what seems to be their position of insecurity and judgmentalism. Have you ever heard the saying, sometimes we the fly and sometimes we the windshield? <laughs> That's true. We put hopes and dreams and ideas and passions on hanging trees of I can't, I'm not able, I'm not good enough. Somebody told me sometime in my past that I was unlovable. Somebody told me that don't try, you won't succeed, you'll fail no matter what you do, so get out of my face. Or we stay down from the beat down of our dreams and our very selves. We are like the religious leaders who hang <coughs> ideas, other people's passions, on trees of doubt and despair and ridicule and damnation. There are times when we judge and we forget where we came from. And sometimes we live our lives in those fearful places or in our well-established routines of our own making, when God is calling us to a new reality. God is calling us to a new job, a new attitude, a new existence, a new relationship, a renewed faith in action. We are called to share the good news, the gospel of resurrection. We are called to practice resurrection lives. The disciples and followers of the way of this fledgling movement gained a boldness in sharing their story, in sharing their good news. They felt like they had to obey God's call on their lives. That is, once they figured it out, <laughs> what that call was. So that's not always easy either. They go back to, we must obey God rather than man. God rather than humanity. Yet in that obeying of God, what is God asking you to do? There have been many in 
in history. It is replete with people who are marching off thinking that they're doing the will of God when in actually God was not up in it. God was nowhere near it. And who knows? We know by the fruit of the action. Is it loving? Is it kind? Is it respectful of other human beings? As a former fisherman, Peter and some of the apostles, I think, would have been well familiar with the raging sea and storm. And I think they would be able to identify with and connect with the song that was so beautifully offered by David and Daniel. My soul has been anchored in the Lord. If you spent any time on the water in the storm, you come to understand the fragility of life. Even the recent storms that have ripped through this area, the Derecho, Snowmageddon, and some of the other storms that have come through, they testify to our smallness and to the grandeur of God's creation and the power of that creation. And it helps to put things into perspective. I've had an opportunity to ponder finitude in the last several weeks. Um, some of you may know that in my own family and some of my close friends, it seems that while we're in the midst of planning a funeral, someone else dies. So in the last uh, seven weeks, five people have died. Um, and one most recently is one of our own congregation, Ron Strong, passed this week. He lived right down the street from me my whole life. Yet my soul is anchored in the Lord. Billows may roll and breakers may dash. My soul has been anchored because God holds me fast. I say that to encourage each of us to major on the majors. Life is too short to allow beauty and goodness to pass us by. And if you look for beauty and goodness, you will find it. I'm convinced. Life is too short to hold a grudge. You can hold on to it, yet it'll hurt you more than it hurts the person that you're holding a grudge against. I think a wise person said holding a grudge and being angry is like trying to throw a hot coal on somebody.
For some, that means protesting, protesting, protesting in the street for the lives that matter. Protesting injustice and systemic racism, protesting institutional racism, protesting personal hurts and doubts, joining and energizing the movement of God. For some, that means changing religious institutions from the inside out and from the outside in. Whatever that might be for you, and only you can know what that is for you. Also understand that if the plan or the activity is of human origin, it will end in ruin. If it comes from God, you won't be able to stop it. God's timeline, however, is God's timeline. So here we are, and here's God's timeline. Just be aware, if you're like me, you're impatient. You want things to happen now. And God's timeline is God's timeline. So be faithful and be active. What is the good news? We have choices. We're not locked into our past. And our future has infinite possibilities. Try on this week the spiritual practice of active listening. Listen this week. For many of us, when we're in a conversation, the person's talking, yeah, I keep them talking, but I'm already thinking about what I'm going to say. Or I'm already making my argument in history. Or I'm already thinking about what's for dinner. <laughs>
what's going on. We need those rallying moments too. And we need the kumbaya moments. If it helps of God, it cannot fail. If it is of humanity, it cannot succeed. Enter your soul in the Lord and go live your resurrection life.